Good afternoon, folks. My name's Sandy. This is Sawing with Sandy. Welcome back to a beautiful spring afternoon here in central Ontario, Canada. If you guys have a look around, you probably wouldn't believe me if I said it was spring, unless, of course, you live relatively close to me and then you know exactly what I'm talking about. We still have about two and a half feet of snow in the bush, and therefore that ATV that I just rode out on is not going too far off of these trails. If I try to jot in there, I'm getting about 10 feet and then it's buried. So I'm gonna make the best of it though. It is above freezing today, hence why I've got the ATV out. Uh, just sort of taking it all in, enjoying the day and taking stock of a little bit of a windstorm we had last night. So the wind rolled through, probably knocked a few trees down just out having a look-see. I'm also out here at the sawmill because I want to make one change that I'm going to tell you guys about here today. So let's head on in and I'll show you what I'm going to do today back at my shop. It's going to make my life just a little bit easier, full of less headaches and maybe it'll make your life a bit easier as well. First and foremost, this right here is my sawmill. This is my uh, HM 130 Max by Woodland Mills. I've had no issues with this thing. This thing cuts really, really well. You just got to basically fill up the lubrication tank, fill it up with gas, uh, make sure the battery's charged, and then make sure the blade's sharp and you go to town. I do have a few headaches from time to time, though, that I think I'm going to fix. One is this. You'll notice I'm on a trailer. You'll notice the log stop back here. Every once in a while, if I'm not holding on to this tight and I go to readjust it, I have to loosen this. But if I'm not holding that tight and I loosen this, it falls down on the floor. Normally it doesn't land upright like that where I can just reach it. Normally it goes like that and then I can't quite reach it. And that becomes a headache. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna put, I think, just a little tack weld at the very top of that. What I wanna have happen is if this slides down, I want it to bottom out like right there and just stay there until the next time I grab it. I don't want it to go all the way down to the ground. And that holds true for all my all my log stop pieces. So I'm going to do that here today and uh, we'll head back to the shop obviously to fire up the welder. The next thing I'm going to do here and I've sort of learned this over the years when you're dealing with the log clamps. Now this one I just had positioned like that just so when I put logs up here it doesn't bang into it. Um, Normally it'll sit like this, but every once in a while, if you've got a log clamp like this and you release the, you release the clamp, it'll swing down like this. And because most of the weight is over here, it'll do this and I'll just get you ready. And there it goes. And once again, that becomes a bit of a headache. Uh, I am now starting to anticipate it. I can prevent it most of the time, but that is not always possible. So I'm going to take these today. And what I'm going to do, we'll get that out of there. I'm going to make it somehow so it can't slide out the bottom. A little bit of a headache. What you might be able to do, real easy trick. You guys see that pin in there? I think if I just knock it out the one side just a little bit, or maybe even slide a bolt through there, that'll be an easy fix. So I'm going to take that and the other one, as well as all the log stops, back to my shop. I'm going to fix that once and for all. The other thing I'm going to fix is this. This log stop, I often generally set it. Whoops. <laughs> I often generally set it right about at this range. I have it just below four inches from the top of the bunk because I'm often cutting four by material. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole here and I'm going to have it so I can put a pin or a bolt so that instead of having to draw numbers on here or having to hold it when I tighten it in place, I can simply put the bolt through, drop it down and tighten it. It won't slide down on me for that one particular measurement that I'm often using. And since I'm often cutting two by material as well, I might also just uh, go ahead and drill a hole all the way through at the two inch mark and then at the four inch mark. And then that will allow me to easily put a bolt through and uh, drop it down and I won't have to measure. And uh, I think that'll make life a little bit easier. If you're not exactly sure what I mean, stay tuned. We're heading to the shop. And these little tidbits of information I'm hoping will not only make things easier for me, maybe for you guys. Here we go. All right, guys, let's start with the log stops. And uh, what I'm going to do here is, as I said, I'm going to drill a hole at two inches and four inches. Very common size that I'm cutting on the sawmill. 
you may have to adjust your your uh, hole placement if you decide to do this based on the material you cut and I'm just gonna measure down from the top I already have lines here but I'm actually gonna put the hole just above or at the top of the line and my marker doesn't work put a hole there and we'll put a hole right there okay and then I'll just repeat the process for the other ones Same general spot, yep. guys we got the holes in and basically how it's gonna work that's the uh, two inch mark so when I put that in I can drop it all the way down it'll sit right at the two inch mark or slightly below it then I can clamp it in place when I need four inches which is a common size for me push it in drop it down clamp it in and then you can take that out and I'll uh, store it nearby so I got holes in all of them here and I think this might be a good thing to do for all the measurements here it would uh, certainly make it it would make it easier then my marker you guys can see my markers they don't wear off there if I had the holes anyways uh, just an addition there in a perfect world I would have used my drill press um, I just found I wanted to use this drill instead my drill press is kind of cluttered over there so I better get that fi fixed up but there you have it that's uh, what we're dealing with the next thing we're going to address is these log stops accidentally falling through the clamp and onto the floor where it's difficult to reach. I'm going to put a bit of a weld here at the top, just a little nubbin of a weld, and that's going to prevent it from falling down onto the ground. If you don't have a welder, you could probably just drill a small hole there at the top, put a little bolt through, and that would be enough to prevent it from falling through onto the floor. So let's go ahead and do that, and uh, we'll fire up my old arc welder here. going to use some uh, 7014 electrodes here that I've got. 7014 is sort of my go-to here. I don't have a uh, oven to keep my electrodes in, and so I find 7014 works pretty good. pretty good you guys can see what we're dealing with I might actually put a bit more on there just wanted to make sure the settings were good you just got to be careful see how thin that is you could probably burn right through that if you're not careful so just enough 
that that'll prevent it from sliding down. So I think the settings are good. I'll set that one off to the side. This next one will put a bit more of a weld on it. actually not bad. My first one was probably the best one. And I'll just touch up the numbers while we're here. I made these lines originally. We'll just touch them up. They do wear off. I've seen people, they actually, uh, they actually like cut a groove into the, into the log stops and it's permanent. It looks real nice. All right guys, let's see how these are gonna work. First one. Oh yeah. Perfect. Good. And the third one. Beautiful. That's exactly what I'm looking for right there. Well, sure enough, I left the bolts back at the shop, but regardless, we're gonna try out these two holes here. If you can imagine, you'd have a bolt in here. You just slide it in like that and then it sits right where you need it. You don't have to hold on to it. And then you can snug that up and uh, you can decide to leave that or pull it out, whichever you decide. And if you're going to two inches, which I often am, you can put the bolt in, tighten it up, take it out, leave it, whatever you want. So that's gonna be nice. I'll probably end up just leaving the bolt in there. There's a bit of pressure on it anyways, um, once this pushes down and you clamp it. But, uh, I think that's a beautiful thing right there. Real easy to do. Okay, let's try these things out. Now, I came up with a different idea. When I was back at the shop, I was thinking that I would just push this little roll pin. You see the roll pin in there? Just push it so it sticks out a little bit. But in order to do that, and I stopped myself, because if I didn't, it would have been a mistake. In order to do that, you have to have this installed in here already. That would require me taking this off. I didn't feel like doing that, so we're doing something different. Here's what we're doing. That's going to sit in there. There we go. That's going to sit in there. And although it may seem a bit funny to some, I think this will be the easiest option. I'm literally going to put a nail in there. And I'm just going to bend it back just a little bit. there we have it made a few uh, alterations there to the sawmill nothing too fancy i could have probably made that a little bit more complex maybe instead of the nail put a bolt in there maybe push the uh push the roll pin out maybe i could have added a bolt instead of the weld but regardless i chose something that was simple because i've got a mile long to-do list if i spend too much time on these little jobs i'll never get any of the other stuff done and well, then I'll be working on it the rest of my life. And some of those items need attention now, repairs, maintenance, etc. So that's going to do it for me here today. 
just as I'm uh, about to sign off, I just want to point out something to you guys. Check that out. This is where the sawmill was up until about a month or so ago. And at that point, I was asking you guys whether it was worth moving the sawmill up into the shed or whether I should just leave it where it was. If it was sitting where it was, well, I'd be walking in some muck. Check that out. Lots of water, all this snow around here up on the hills. Guess where it's coming. A lot of it's going to end up here. So this will get worse. Very happy with my decision to move that up there. I don't know what the future holds. Maybe I'll bring the sawmill back down here for the summer. Use the log deck. Not sure. Time will tell. Add that to the to-do list. Anyways, it's a beautiful afternoon out here. I think I better take advantage of it. Might just uh, continue puttering along with the ATV. Check out the rest of the trails. Take in some of the vitamin D, the sunshine. We all know what's coming still. Probably a bit more snow. Probably a bit more sunshine. But eventually, we'll be out here. The ground will be bare. We'll be enjoying ourselves. Cutting, cutting logs, making lumber, enjoying life. Guys, that's it for me. Please do me that big favor. Give her the old like -a -roo. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you next time.